After Stalin's death, part of the Communist Party, unhappy with the way things were going, staged a coup. They were supported by the military. The liberal wing of the Bolshevik Party was now in power, and big changes came almost immediately. Mass repression stopped, and prisoners were released. The USSR economy continued to grow thanks to new liberal leadership. Taxes went down, and the average living standard kept rising. In 1956, the Soviet Union adopted the Universal Pension Provision, and eight years later, it was extended to include collective farmers. University tuition fees were abolished. Saturday working hours were reduced from eight to six hours. And in 1960, the official working day was reduced to seven hours. The average income experienced an increase. The growth of the scientific and technical might of the USSR continued. In 1957, the Soviets launched the world's first satellite into space, and just four years later, cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin was the first human to orbit the planet. This early success put the USSR ahead in the space race. Russia still gets perks from it. NASA uses Russian shuttles to get to the International Space Station in 2021, 60 years later. Around the same time, the Soviets began a massive housing construction initiative. They needed new housing to keep up with their impressive industrial growth, which spurred on urban development. 50 million people moved into brand new apartments. For the first time in its history, the USSR had an equal rural and urban population. As censorship weakened, Soviet arts experienced a boom. The USSR started to make a lot more movies, and by the 70s, most of the Soviet Union could tune into their favorite TV program after a long day at work. In the 70s, the Soviets proclaimed their success. Soviet industry growth was outstripping even the United States. By 1980, the Soviet Union ranked first in Europe and second in the world in terms of industrial and agricultural production. The main strength of the USSR was that it was self-sufficient, one of only a few countries in the world capable of producing all its industrial needs. The Soviets created a unified electricity system, uniting 78 energy systems and supplying energy to its entire territory, as well as to Hungary, Czechoslovakia, Poland, and the German Democratic Republic. A big win for Soviet foreign policy was their détente towards the West. This was basically a bunch of USA-Soviet treaties that limited arms and nuclear arsenals. This freed up a lot of money for the USSR to spend on its own citizens. The prosperity lasted until the 1980s, when the USSR started experiencing serious problems. With no democratic elections, Communist Party leaders ruled until their death. By the 1980s, the entire USSR party elite were dinosaurs. They appointed their friends and relatives with no experience to leadership positions. As a result, corruption flourished. The clumsy bureaucratic system led to a huge absence of imported goods. The most famous example was Levi's jeans, which were almost impossible to get in the Soviet Union. The black market started to be the only means of getting anything cool. The Afghan war, which started in 1979, was a huge blow to the Soviet economy and drained it of an enormous amount of resources. It also led to Western-backed economic sanctions. These sanctions, along with the discovery of new oil fields in Western Siberia, changed the Soviet economy and made it dangerously dependent on oil. Alcohol addiction and crime became huge problems. An urgent need for reform was brewing. In 1987, the famous Perestroika Initiative was announced. This was an umbrella term for economic reform and a new ideology within the Soviet leadership. For instance, they started allowing private business, and in 1989, held the first free nominations of candidates for USSR deputies. Confrontation with the West declined to almost zero since the Soviet Union was in urgent need of loans. The Soviets were forced to make peace and find common ground with their old enemies. All their efforts, however, did not solve the pressing economic and social problems plaguing the USSR. Ethnic conflicts broke out in Central Asia and the Caucasus. The shortage of goods was still a constant problem, and it caused significant discontent among the population. The Soviet Union was in deep financial trouble. The 90s started off even worse for the USSR. It was forced to carry out a monetary reform which devalued its currency, making it almost worthless. New prices were now up to 10 times higher than before. 
For the first time, though, Soviet citizens were allowed to buy foreign currency. Peaceful, velvet revolutions popped up all over USSR allied countries in Eastern Europe, replacing the ruling communist parties with democratic leaning ones. Inter ethnic unrest continued in the Caucasus, and the Baltic republics unilaterally proclaimed independence. Attempts to suppress this democratic wave led to clashes and human casualties. Worried about what was happening, part of the military and party leadership decided to return to the old order. They formed the State Emergency Committee and conspired to carry out a coup. A state of emergency was declared in Moscow and the tanks started rolling in. They were met by thousands of demonstrators and the troops had no choice but to retreat. The coup had failed. That dismal failure signaled to the world that Moscow's grip on power was over. The Soviet republics, one after another, declared their independence. On December 25, 1991, the USSR officially ceased to exist. <laughs>